a small announcement uh, as i mentioned pycon singapore is happening from june 17 to 19 this is the third time we are organizing it uh, these are the three keynote speakers uh, i'm sure you guys know um, these people and we are actively looking for proposals for talks uh, uh, so please submit a proposal as soon as possible because the deadline will end soon and it's uh, Um, okay, so let's start. Okay, uh, so um, my talk was supposed to be about uh, tips and tricks in Python. Uh, so, so I, I want this to be an interactive session. So please stop me or, or, or please interact with me. Otherwise, I wouldn't know whether you guys understand or not. And but be nice uh, because I, I am also a noob. Okay, so uh, uh, how many of you? Okay, uh, how do I? Control, command, command plus, 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 yeah. Is this better? Yes. Can I increase one more? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so how many of you guys are familiar with the asterisk notation before the function uh, arguments? Okay, so around half of you. Uh, uh, so, so as you can see, I'm passing three arguments to func2. Uh, the asterisk notation can... Uh, uh, converts the arcs to a tuple, uh, and then uh, so just to prove, uh, and here I change the first two arguments, and then I pass it back to another function, uh, x, y, z, and it prints the result. So uh, here we pass goodbye cruel and world. Uh, this is this is useful if you don't know how many arguments a function is going to have. It works in both Python two and Python three, and uh, and then it just changes the. Uh, th this was just to demonstrate uh, that it works. It just changes the first two. Uh, the first two elements, and then we print uh, all the three elements. So both, so the it's the arguments are getting packed and then unpacked. Okay. Now uh, let's. This is how you call the range function normally. Uh, the uh, three to six. So a range function just starts from the start uh, value and then prints till one minus the final value, uh, and so you get three, four, five. But uh, you could also uh, uh, just to demonstrate that uh, that unpacking works. You could uh, you, you you could declare the arguments as a list, and then you pass it to args and uh, range function. Even though it so it accepts two numbers, but this automatically unpacks it to three and six, and so we get the same result. Uh, please interrupt me if I'm going fast, going slow, or anything. Uh, okay. So another example. Now now uh, this was when we were unpacking lists. Now let's see if it works for dictionaries. Uh, so here I declare a dictionary. And then uh, when you want to unpack dictionaries, you put two asterisks before the dictionary name. And so, uh, so here uh, the voltage is 4 million. So if you see the output, it says you have 4 million volts. Uh, it unpacks the action, it matches the action uh, key to the action, uh, to the parameter name in the parrot function, uh, action to action, uh, voltage to uh, voltage and state to state. Okay. Uh, now, which Zen principle are we violating with this syntax? Sorry? Uh, which Zen principle are we violating with this syntax? Uh, actually, most of most of what I would cover, uh, you, you should not use it because it makes for unreadable code. But this was. <laughs> that is principle number two. Explicit is better than implicit. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I mean uh, this is this is not even the worst part. Uh, no, when you come to <laughs> when you come to this, <laughs> yeah, you should never do this. But uh, but yeah, I wanted to play around with this, and so yeah. No, the desktop too. You can use it, but if you write, let's say, a math function which accepts a series of numbers, that makes mm -hmm. sense. But if you write a, a mixing, uh, mixing to, uh, arguments which are like uh, separate, mm -hmm. in, in provide different. different I, and and in many cases, when you don't know the number of arguments and so on, then also it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I give no guarantees of this being good good coding practices. This is just for the heck of it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, I won't be going through. We won't have enough time to cover generators later. But anyway, this is so. This is just a generator that, uh, for if if you have very large uh, lists, then then you use generators because then you don't need to store all the numbers explicitly. Like if you have a million numbers, then if you have a generator, then as you iterate through the generator, uh, you the Py Python does not actually store all the elements in memory. So this was just an example. So yeah, uh, so this. Uh, so it even works for generators. Here, the output would be range would give 0, 1, 2. 
So this would be uh, uh, all odd numbers 1, 3 and 5 and so yeah uh, you can unpack uh, pack and unpack generators as well. Okay now this is sort of nested uh, a tuple inside a list. Uh, so here again uh, uh, you, you uh, one way to evaluate what the output would be that you, you uh, uh, both on the LHS if the LHS is not a list or the RHS is not a list you put a list or a or tuple brackets here and then you simply match the arguments sort of like pattern matching so a is 1 b comma c is b is 2 c is 3 and d is 4 uh, okay now uh, every python beginner is taught that in python it's very easy to swap swap variables uh, so yeah if you had to swap four variables then uh, this is how your code would look like like that's all that is needed i mean uh, uh, if you have two variables then they then python stars often joke that uh, a comma b uh, is equal to b comma a and that works but i wanted to uh, uh, yeah go into how it works so this the concepts are the same so this is a module that lets you see the uh, sort of the byte code uh, uh, it's it's a module for c python that lets you see sort of the instructions in the uh, sort of the byte code instructions two is simply the line uh, number that it is showing the instructions for so our function has only one line but if it had two lines then uh, then there would be first be all the instructions that are executed for line two and then all the instructions for line three and uh, see because argument is the function name uh, and uh, yeah there's only one line one two okay so first uh, uh, the evaluation always starts from uh, so equal to is an assignment operator so the evaluation would it would first evaluate the right hand side and then the left hand side so first uh, it goes from left to right so first it loads a into the stack load fast is simply loading onto the stack then it loads b then it loads c it loads d uh, then uh, actually it builds a tuple of these values uh, so this is this is the build tuple statement and then it again unpacks those those values now uh, you would think that it is uh, that this is a wasteful statement because why are we building the tuple when we uh, actually have to uh, when we actually have to unpack uh, but uh, uh, if we if we don't build a tuple so stack is last in first out so if you don't uh, build a uh, tuple then if if you pop from the stack then uh, what you will uh, get first is uh, a b uh, so so it builds a, so when it builds the tuple it first pops the elements that uh, it pops the elements after the last in, after the last instruction so it pops a b c d puts them in the same order in which they were inserted in the stack it builds a tuple a b c d and then it stores the unpacked values into d c b and a so uh, it stores uh, 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 it, it stores the value of uh, a in d uh, uh, b in c c in b and d in a uh, is everybody clear if you have doubts please ask i am also a noob build tuple and unpack sequence essentially flips the order. Yeah, it's it's only because the stack uh, right. the stack is last in first. But, but if it was smarter, what do you just Oh yeah, I'll I, I show that it, it is actually smarter. Okay. So what do you think happens here when there are only two arguments? So actually when I was reading this then I also had the same question. I mean why does this do these two wasteful operators? I mean I'm sure there would be a smarter way. So actually uh, if you see the instructions for swapping only two variables then they are slightly different from the above. So load fast is the same because it first sees the assignment operator and then it goes to B and A. It first loads B and then it loads A. But then instead of uh, build tuple, it actually does rot2. What rot2 does, it flips the two uh, arguments, but it's a lot, it's a lot faster uh, because it knows that the number of arguments is two and so it wastes unnecessary steps in finding the number of arguments and then storing them. And so uh, it, it does not have to first uh, build the tuple and then unpack the tuple again. It simply rotates the two arguments and then puts the top value in the uh, and then puts uh, and then puts the values. So it would put. Uh, so if it rotates, then your stack would read from the bottom b comma. Uh, yeah, it would read b comma a, and then it would uh, store. Uh, oh, sorry. Why am I going crazy with the pointer? Uh, it it will store the value of a and b and uh, and b and a. So this is. Uh, so, so actually, this also works for a comma b comma c. Now, next question that I had was, uh, why, why, why? I mean, when does uh, when does it perform these optimizations? So I looked into the C code. 
uh, peephole.ca is sort of the the class that you should look into. I mean, you can go to this link uh, if you're interested. And then, uh, so you see, it actually has case statements for if the arguments are one, two, and three. So it doesn't want to do the wasteful step of building the tuple and then unpacking it if the if the number of arguments is two or one, two, or three. Okay. So, so but still, why can you scroll up a bit? Still, yeah. we can just pop from stack in and into the. Right into the so we can remove that line number six okay. and put that line number ten, and put okay. line number seven. Why do we need to rotate them? Why don't we just pop the stack the other way? If you if you remove that, then it would store uh, the value of B and B and A and A. Yeah, but in compile time we can just switch ten and seven. We can switch <laughs> ten and seven and remove the six. No, but, but store fast does not say which uh, which element of the stack you are removing. So, so we always remove the top elements. Yes. So if you remove the top element, then yes, the yes, result yes, would yes, be same as the same names. yeah. So a comma b uh, would be would store the same values as before. So you need to know the uh, the, the the variables so because Python doesn't have variables like C in the same sense, right? It's just a label. But the memory location where this a is located. So if you if you are unpacking the same labels into different order. So you need to somehow maintain uh, where you're reading into where you're writing. Because you don't have temporary variables like you would usually do in C. But, you're, but aren't you using the stack as a temporary variable? Actually, I didn't know about the variable part, so thank you. Uh, is that, is that, that what stack's being used for? It's temporary, temporary storage. So yeah. could, couldn't you just plump or pop it on stack and then read it back into different variables? So do you know that variable is basically a, a reference? So it's pointer to memory. Because we read from memory when we put on stack. Is, it, is there a mutual uh, the immutability? Uh, yeah, this is like, uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, like, uh, but this is uh, the way the also assignment works, like the left value, right value. Mm -hmm. where, 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 yeah, I mean, actually, you can go here. Uh, I mean, I have also not investigated uh, how the how exactly the loading and store statements work. I only investigated the why why it doesn't have a raw two uh, in when it has more than three arguments. But yeah, we could probably look into the C code and so that. Okay, if we just look at the output of the this function. Okay. Yeah. So, in the right to columns, what exactly is it? Is it the arguments for the for the command? What what what's in the right side? Uh, okay. So I do not know what what zero one two and three are, but it probably denotes the it probably denotes where in the stack these variables are. So right. it's one on top of the other. So they are probably pointers for. I mean, not pointers in in a stack. You don't have pointers, but sort of like representatives for which stack position. So this, this is arguments for for the so as it would be in in a sum word. Uh, not a right side is the arguments for for the command. Yes, uh, arguments for the not not exactly, but yeah. I mean, it, it formats the output. So this is not exactly how the bytecode would look like, but yeah, the analogy is correct. But so I I don't but I don't think that the instructions would actually have zero, one, two, and three. These are just for our for our reference. So, at which position are these values in the stack? Right. So, if we just say, for example, in line eighteen, store fast three. If you remove twelve and fifteen, is it three a and we remove twelve and fifteen? No. I, in in an actual stack, you will never have pointers into the stack. So, uh, so so these are just for a reference. These are th so these are not actually how. Uh, this is a yeah. This is just a visualization. So. So, so when you actually, I mean, in a stack, you don't have any pointers to stack just as one pointer, the top pointer. Sure, sure. So you won't have this three, two, one, and zero. So you cannot say, uh, you can just push and pop. Yeah, but why don't we just trade pop to a pointer we want? Oh, so you are saying that instead of, uh, so you are saying that the compiler should be smart enough that instead of uh, popping, that instead of pop, in, instead of popping, Putting them in a tuple and then assigning one by one, we should pop directly into the other label, is it? Right. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to this, but. Isn't it because but Python, the tuples are immutable, right? So they can't actually change them. No, I mean, 
I don't think that that reasoning is correct because they are actually but assigning two variables. Your, 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 your left hand, your left hand is not yeah, you are actually building the tuple. So, so right, right, right hand is a tuple. And actually, you see, uh, it first builds the tuple and then it unpacks it again. So this is not exactly a tuple. This lo like this looks like a unoptimized code to me. Uh, this this should not be unoptimized because this is exactly the byte code that is produced by. Uh, I mean, uh, I was just curious, and this is why I I actually use the this module. So I don't think this is unoptimized code. If it was unoptimized, then uh, then you wouldn't see the difference between this and this. No. If it's for like five, five elements or it's for one, two, three, four. Oh, good idea. Yeah, but I have not. Uh, but, but I'll go home and check it out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, true. Um, uh, any more questions? Sorry, I couldn't provide the answer to this, but but but, but I try to find it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Now, uh, now here I was nosy and I wanted to. Uh, and I wanted to test different combinations. So this is simple sequence assignment. Uh, this, of course, prints one comma two. Again, simple list or tuple uh, both work fine. So green A is green and B is blue. Then A comma B is called X Y. Whenever you see a string, okay. So so the so the analogies that I the uh, the the ways that I provide to expand the rules are not actually how they implemented. This is just from basic understanding. So, so x, y, you can if you have a string, then you can sort of split. Uh, for your understanding, you can split it as x character comma y character, and then this makes sense because a comma b, uh, a becomes x and and b becomes y. Then if range one five two two is the step, so you start from one, you plus two, so one comma three, and then you plus five. But five is the end, so you cannot reach five. So it becomes one comma three. So a comma b is equal to one comma three. And uh, yeah, one comma three. This example was just to show that you don't actually need tuples and lists. You can actually put generator expressions here, and th they, those will work as well. Okay. Now to some. Now to nested sequences. So uh, how how you can interpret this is to uh, to make this easier to understand. Whenever you don't see, whenever you see uh, statements like this, you can put a bracket around both the LHS and the RHS if the LHS and the RHS don't actually have a bracket. So here you can put a bracket around a comma b. Uh, yeah, if the whiteboard was there, it would be easier. But uh, so you can put a bracket around a comma b, a comma b. Okay, let's you can put a bracket around a b comma c, and then you can be x y comma z. So a b uh, is a b will have to be assigned to x y, and c will have to be assigned to z. And we already know that when we assign a b to x y, then we get a is equal to x, b is equal to y. So yeah, a is equal to x, b is equal to y, and this is z. This is the same logic, just that instead of x y, it's a list. Uh, for unpacking and packing, you can treat lists and sequences as sort of similar uh, lists and strings. Uh, yeah, so so A will become one, B will become two. I mean, first it will unpack this this, so C will become this, and then A comma B will be assigned one comma two, so A becomes one, and B becomes two. Okay. Now uh, these are the things that I tried and they did not work. Why? Because X Y Z would actually, I mean. Okay, none of what I'm saying is actually how it's done. This is just for this just as tools of understanding. So x, y, z would be x comma y comma z, uh, but on the LHS we only have two values, uh, a, b, and c because a comma b is a nested thing. So uh, there are too many values to unpack. Uh, so x, y, z is actually three elements. That's why it says too many values. Now here, now a, b comma c. So actually the first step would work fine. A, b will be assigned to x. C will be assigned to y, but A B cannot be assigned to X because X is just one element. So again, need more than one value to unpack. That's because when it tries to assign A B, assign X to A, assign is also the wrong term. But okay, assign X to A B, then A B A B is two values and X is one. So this will also throw an error. Uh, now this one, again the same case. Uh, uh, it has uh, uh, because this when when you split. So okay, the first step would work fine. There are two elements on the right hand side, two elements on the left hand side. A comma B will be assigned to one comma two, no problem. But then, uh, when you have C and this, then actually uh, this is uh, since this is a tuple, this would be split into T H I S. And when you assign only C to T H I S, it will not work because this is a tuple of only one element, while that is a string with four elements. 
so it throws an error too many values to unpack because this is four values uh, is everybody with me till now can you please go a bit slow because you are okay we're sorry uh, so please do prompt me if i'm if i'm fast uh, so uh, a comma b comma c again uh, it uh, it does the same thing uh, oh well uh, this is this is why i should prepare my slides well in advance uh, this this error ignore this comment uh, and yeah, a, a comma b is assigned to x y, c is assigned to z, so c is z, a comma b, x comma y, so a b becomes x y z. Okay. Uh, now this, uh, this does not work because this is actually only two elements, and these are three elements. So you need more than two values to unpack because these are three. Okay. Uh, okay. Now this one uh, only works with Python three, and uh, I have nothing against the IPython developers, but if you have Python 2 installed, it's really not easy to get, a, to get the Python 3 notebook to work. So, I, so I'm using the Jupyter kernel here, but anyway, rant aside. Okay, now extended sequence unpacking. So Python 3, okay, I don't like this code because it is very unreadable, uh, and uh, I, but, but since Python 3 has implemented this feature, let's explore. So whenever you see asterisk B, you can treat it as, uh, it can be converted to a tuple. So B can actually, be a tuple. So here it's like A. So uh, the way to solving these types of expressions is that you always evaluate the ends first. So A comma B. So B will store two comma. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, here since I didn't want to copy each one in a separate cell and then space the output, so I've written less comments. Uh, A would be one, and then B would become two, three, four, five. Uh, is this clear? Because this is actually a tuple. So so if you eva if you apply my evaluation rule, you put a left parenthesis here before a you put a right parenthesis after b and then you put a left parenthesis here you put a left right parenthesis here then it says that a will be assigned to one no problem and then b would be b since it's a tuple so it can be assigned to two three four five it can be assigned to multiple values because b is the, here we come back to the packing and packing i hope you remember this from maybe 15 minutes ago so yeah a is one b is two three four five okay here again eval uh, not how it actually works but apply the argument, apply, I mean, this may be how it actually works. I mean, I didn't look at the code. But B will be assigned to five. You always evaluate the ends first, and then A will store one, two, three, four. Okay, again, evaluate ends first, A one, C five, B two, three, four. Okay, now to show that it works with characters. Again, uh, uh, B is a tuple, so tuple can have, I mean, it's not a tuple, but analogously, it's a tuple. So B can have zero values, so you apply A, A becomes X, B is an empty list, right? Then you apply here, evaluate ends first, B becomes X, A is an empty list. Here apply ends first, A, A becomes X, C becomes Y, B is an empty list. Uh, apply ends first, A becomes uh, X, C becomes Y, now you are left with dot, comma, dot, comma, dot. B can store, multi B can store a uh, tuple or a, a list, uh, so yeah, so it becomes dot, comma, dot, comma, dot. Okay. Now here, uh, a comma uh, uh, this one again. Uh, you uh, if it doesn't have parentheses around to understand, you can put parentheses around. So a comma b can be assigned to one. A can be assigned to one. B can be assigned to two. Now when it comes to asterisk c, uh, it can be assigned to bracket left bracket three bracket. It can be assigned to uh, okay. Wait, I'll just write down here. Uh, is is this clear or do I need to explain more? Anyone who doesn't understand this. Uh, uh, maybe you are feeling shy, uh, so I'll waste more of your time. So you can treat this as a comma b comma asterisk c is equal to then a becomes one, three elements, three elements, they all map out, b becomes two, asterisk c becomes three. Uh, so asterisk c can be c, so c is equal to 3, no, oh, wait, 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 asterisk c is equal to 3, so yeah, c, yeah, I got carried away, should not put back a 2 minute now, so asterisk c, so actually c becomes, yeah, j just, just to put the result same as whatever, <laughs> then a comma b comma c comma asterisk d, same thing, d can be empty, so d is empty here, okay, now I tried with this, but this, uh, okay, Python does not allow two star expressions in the same statement, 
by same statement they mean at the same level later on i'll show you two star expressions in the same statement but at different levels of nesting okay now here uh, a comma b comma c two elements we all map out a assign gets assigned to one b to two c to this okay uh, here so notice the uh, here uh, a comma b will be assigned to one comma two a becomes one b is equal to two now as to c c is at this on the other side but since c can take a sequence so it gets assigned to the to the to the list containing this if it was a if it was a, a c then it would have this so do you know the difference between this statement and the statement below since since this is an asterisk c it has a, it uh, c becomes equal to a list containing this so so imagine if you replace the this uh, the list containing this instead of c uh, instead of asterisk c it would uh, wait so let me show you so from if you know the output then this is how you can interpret is and then or oh, with an asterisk in the front and then you know that this tuple can be untagged to match this so actually that's why c is equal to this make sense is my explanation very good or or is it too basic stuff uh, because i can't believe none of you are raising any questions uh, okay so here uh, again so so put put a bracket around this 1 comma 2 comma this now you will think that there are four elements here but remember that asterisk d can take an empty list uh, because it's uh, it can be unpacked so d becomes empty a gets assigned to 1 b gets assigned to 2 and c gets assigned to this is this clear okay uh, can you guys see this <laughs> you, you should have told me before okay now uh, a comma b comma asterisk c comma d uh, so uh, na a again uh, you again evaluate the ends first so d becomes equal to this a comma b becomes equal to 1 comma 2 and asterisk c can take an uh, empty list so c becomes so c is empty is this clear uh, so this is only uh, extended uh, unpacking in python 3 right yes uh, this doesn't work in python 2 uh, to see the proof uh oh wait i i deleted that example since oh wait here it is yeah it doesn't work okay so but i mean where, where would you do this kind of thing you would never do this <laughs> 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 i mean if you do this then uh, i mean uh, pray for your life because the developer who will maintain your code after this would not like you i found something similar in like some fashion language like scale yes uh, this is what, yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually you can think of i mean if you are familiar with scheme then actually you can think of so so in any functional language in a list you have a car and you have a kidder so c a r is the first element and the kidder actually gives you a list so actually asterisk c does the same job it does not do the same job but we are talking analogy so it's so it's a list so yeah you are exactly right this was an attempt to make it more functional but i am showing you how it can be used in evil ways uh, okay uh, so yeah again Uh, a comma yeah this was when uh, i thought i had too much time so i print a print b print c print d uh, so a comma so again two elements a, a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 no problem uh, c and asterisk d this uh, now uh, this is just one one element but d can be uh, oh no no so here if this is a tuple and this is uh, this is this now uh, the, remember that this can be written as t comma h comma i comma s so c is actually in functional term c becomes the car so the first element so c becomes uh, oh yeah c becomes t here and then so actually if you have a list t comma h comma i comma s in functional terms car of this list would be t and kidder of this would be his so this is the same concept uh, d is uh, is everyone clear with this example wow my explanation must wrong uh, as this case equal to 1 yeah this uh, Okay, th this is simple because one is not a sequence, and this expects uh, sequence. Uh, so it, it's clear. Start assignment target must be list or tuple. Okay, now this one. Why this one doesn't work? Uh, uh, I I don't know the exact reason, but I think it is because uh, if 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 there's no comma after this, so you see the difference between these two. The only difference is this comma. So if this is there's no comma, actually Python does not think of uh, unpacking. So uh, So actually, uh, it it th treats this as a mathematical expression. 
So, so to tell Python that yeah, we are still interested in packing and packing, you have to put a comma if it's a single value tuple. I'm sure if you have played around with tuples, then you know that you cannot write bracket one bracket because that gets evaluated as a mathematical expression which is equal to one. If you want to make a tuple of, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, yeah, I think instead of saying bracket one bracket. Uh, so if you want to make, if you write this, this is one. But if you write this, yeah, this is a tuple containing one. Tuple, single element tuple. Is everybody clear with this? Okay, now uh, this, yeah, wait, is there, oh yeah, I've already gone through this. Yeah, this one doesn't work because this, it expects an iterable or a string or a list and one is just an integer, so int object is not iterable. Okay, here, simple, A gets evaluated to one. Okay, here, uh, Oh yeah, because if you put if you put a comma after this again for the same reason as uh, for the same reason as this, this also results in an error because Python does not think that it is an act, it is it is a, oh sorry Python does not think wait where was I yeah Python does not think that this is actually a list so if you put a one comma uh, oh yeah yeah and you put a comma here then this actually this actually works okay now. Uh, Again, the same logic, uh, one is not any table. 20, what is the shortcut to jump from cell to cell? Uh, does anyone remember? Okay, never mind. Command M, A, M, D, S. Command M? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, that was a low move. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm very happy that my roommate messaged me because the me the message just below that was even more embarrassing. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to zone out. Uh, okay, uh, don't like you. Uh, asterisk a comma b again. Uh, yeah, this is because uh, this is uh, this can take zero elements, so this becomes a list with no element, and b is one. And this one again, uh, uh, you first evaluate the sides. B can be allocated to one and a can since a is a since a is a sequence a is a list with no element here again uh, when when python evaluates this it sees three arguments on the right hand side and only two are on the left hand side so too many values to unpack okay here again it sees three arguments on the right hand side two on the left hand side uh, so so okay this one gets uh, okay no 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 that is not the reason here you first evaluate the the sides so, so it sees two elements, but this is a list. So C can actually be equal to a list of C can C can actually be equal to two comma three. But when it comes to a comma b and it only sees one, it, it it cannot assign two elements to one. So it says that int object is not iterable. Okay, here uh, it says uh, it sees two elements. Uh, so it's uh, two elements, but the second element is a list. So first we evaluate all the non-list elements. So a comma b gets mapped to x y, a becomes x, b becomes y, and c becomes two comma three. Okay, again here, evaluate uh, two elements versus one element. No one is a list, so too many values to unpack. Three values here, it's only two. Okay, here, okay now this is where it gets interesting. This is asterisk of tuples. Uh, so uh, you first uh, Python will have no. So actually there are two arguments, but so, uh, but the first argument is a list, so you know that the number does not matter. You go to the sides first, solve the easy ones first. C is equal to three. Then asterisk a comma b gets mapped to uh, one comma two. Uh, a becomes one. Uh, b becomes two. Okay. Asterisk a comma b one comma two. Uh, yeah, because this is not a list or a uh, start. Yeah, this is not a list or a tuple. Uh, if it if it was uh, if it had brackets, then it would have been different. Wait, did I put that example now? Okay. Uh, again here. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So the reason is that th this didn't have a comma. Uh, yeah. If you have a comma, then it works fine. Uh, here. Again, you put a comma. So so this is this kid. This actually expects a list, and uh, this so a comma b gets gets uh, in a list. It gets evaluated to x comma y. Uh, and then a becomes equal to x, b becomes equal to y. Here, again, uh, yeah, if you put a comma, then this works. So notice the difference between 37 and 38. Yeah. Uh, oh, this does not work, but for a different reason. Uh, then this is, 
Oh, because because in your tuple you actually have uh, you actually have only two values, uh, while uh, while uh, this this will get expanded to four values. So it says too many values to unpack. Is everybody clear on this? Can everybody see, or do you still have to guess? Can you see there? Preventing my brain from being poisoned. Is this so bad? <laughs> oh man, you should not say things like this in between talk. Okay, uh, so this you put a comma, so everything is fine. Then uh, you so so it expects a list. You come here, uh, so t comma h comma i comma s. A becomes equal to t. B becomes equal to a sequence of h i and s. Here again, uh, if you if you don't have brackets around it, you put brackets around it. Uh, you uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, and and the sense so once you put brackets around it asterisk of uh, a comma asterisk b will uh, and c are two elements but since the first so we evaluate the sides first c becomes equal to s now uh, uh, a comma asterisk b will be equal to t comma h comma i uh, again evaluate sides first a becomes equal to t b becomes equal to h oh oh well this is a harmless email our brain are going to explode about this <laughs> really i have not got to the interesting part <laughs> but isn't this fun? The tension is the best. No. <laughs> no, but I asked you a question. Why? Why do we want to do this? Because if it's just an exercise for, oh, we can do this in Python, but hmm. it actually has zero practical use. Uh, we should be doing it because Python is a language which teaches us not to do stupid things true. for a reason. True. Okay, this fine. Let's let's go to the other stuff. Philosophy. Then. Okay, so so maybe I'll upload this on GitHub or something, and I'll give you the link. Then, uh, then but I'm not done. Tasks, you'll get this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm okay. being mean, but <laughs> okay. So uh, let's I get to. See the techniques Excellent. actually are very useful, and I, I think I used a lot of them. But I must agree that examples maybe you know. Okay, so next time I won't go crazy with the examples. Let's move on to other stuff. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you you never you you never be using this in any, hopefully any production code. Uh, you could only use this in probably competitions, which test how how short your code can be. No, sometimes oh. it's useful. Sometimes yeah. it's useful. Uh, I I happen to use uh, uh, the star notation when I don't really care about what's next. So uh, I I unpack the stuff that I want to, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, let the remaining stuff just pass along to the rest. Mm -hmm. So, at, at so actually, actually for star notation, I, I vaguely remember it, it used to be part of all the Python that got removed and then and now reintroduced. Because it, it, it doesn't work in Python. No, it, no, it no. works, uh, but it doesn't. The uh, the extended sequence unpacking does not work. But uh, sequence unpacking works. This is Python. Yes, yeah, so a corpus star d doesn't work. Now. Uh, we can test it out. Uh, yeah, just test it. Oh, does yeah. So I, I have never used the extension. <laughs> I have never used it on the left hand side, but on the right hand side, it has its uses. Sometimes, it it is more use. It is useful. Decorators. Decorators, yeah. For decorators, it's yeah. Yep, I, it doesn't work. Decorators are one good example. Yeah, it doesn't work. So, yep. But uh, yeah, uh, okay. So uh, other Python basics. How many of you guys uh, are familiar with this? That Python has negative indices. Okay, uh, I'm sure it's all of you, but some are too shy. Uh, so yeah, so so the minus one is actually the last element. So it's, you can think of it like a circular, circular loop or something. So a minus one becomes equal to ten. Then minus three, the minus threeth index is minus one, minus two, minus three. So this is eight. Okay, now list slices. Now uh, a, uh, so so in Python you can slice elements like you you mentioned the start index and the end index. Uh, it doesn't take into account. So actually the elements in our list are same as index. So zeroth element is zero, first element is one. If you guys are not, I'm sure everyone is aware, but uh, but in most languages, apart from R, I think the indexes start from zero. Is this correct? Uh, R indexes start from one, right? Anyone is familiar with that? Start from one. Hmm? Okay. And bad luck, bad luck. Okay. Julian. Okay, <laughs> I've never heard of it. Uh, yeah, so two zero one two 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 eight, but it does not take into account the last index. Okay, negative indices. 
very same concept minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 it includes the first index then this is the minus 3 minus 7 so 7 comma 8 it doesn't include the minus second index which is minus 1 minus 2 which is 9 so this is why okay now if you have a step step is the same as the range function so here you so this by default is 0 by default is the length len a which will be equal to uh, 11 in this case because you see the number of elements in the list are actually 11 zero, 1 to 10 is 10 and then 0 you add one element so it's 11 starts from 0 0 2 4 6 8 10 it goes to 12 12 is past the bounds of the uh, list so it just prints that uh, so here uh, no okay at least the subject is nice so you guys don't know what it's about uh, 3 0 3 6 9 same concept Oh, hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, but just on the rot 2, apparently pi pi doesn't, it takes out the rot 2. So it uses the whole tuple thing? It, it doesn't have the rot 2. Build tuple and, and then unpack. Pi pi implementation of that. Uh, ah, thing. okay. Do you know? Apparently. Uh, wonder why. Okay. Never mind. Uh, 2 a 2, maybe it breaks some garden. Okay, okay, I should get that. Uh, a 2 a 2, so, uh, so 8 is the stopping index. 2, 4, 6, it comes to 8, doesn't work. Oh man, I should really execute this. Okay, so 0, 1, 2. Okay, now this was interesting. I just put the negative step for fun. I expected it to go first put 0 because I thought that it always starts from the first element. But then I found that, that if you have negative index, then actually it starts from the last element. I mean, intuitively, if you would, if you would replace the values, then I would do it like this. Uh, 0, len a, minus 1. Uh, but... Uh, but, but how they so the so according to me initially before executing this I thought that the zero element should be printed first. Right. Uh, right. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh so yeah this. Uh, oh because it starts from the last element, but the first element is greater than the last element. Uh, I, I mean, so, uh, so, so, so on reading the C code, I found that whenever it's a negative step, then it always starts from the last, it tries to start from the last element of the index. But uh, since we are forcing it to start from zero, so, so, so it cannot, st so zero is already beyond the, so it, so it goes from right to left, but zero is already beyond the, it doesn't include the first element, so, so it's an empty list. Let me see what happens if this is a one. Oh well, uh, yeah. So. Before. Uh, 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 I don't think it will work. It will throw an error because len i minus one or len i len a. Okay, let's try this. I this should throw an error. Oh, oh well, it does not. Okay, so let me try this. Len a minus one. Colon colon minus one in numpy. As far as I know, that's just like a shortcut for. And you can use it in yeah, yeah, so exactly. Oh, okay. So earlier I thought that I mean it always tries to follow the left to right sequence, but if it's a minus one, then it actually goes from zero to left. But but apparently that's not how it works. So let's go to my yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, so actually it it, it does make a difference. So see the the zero is missing, and if I try Lenny. Oh, so it's still. Oh, because uh, this is yeah minus one. No. <laughs> uh, that is the Just negative index it. will yeah, always be uh, the last thing. Just leave it empty. Yeah, that is what the initial one was. No, 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 no. no. Just the second one. Take out yeah. minus the second one. Ah, okay. Uh, is everybody clear? More experiments because I'm not clear. <laughs> but <laughs> good. But Lenny, the there's no. The step. So it's basically saying from the end of the list to the start of the list. But I thought this should be Lenny minus one. <coughs> but why does the why why does this leave out the? So oh, it does try not. Hundred minus two. Try hundred. Yeah, it would probably work. And why? Why is that? Because uh, 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 when you're iterating, yes. you can give indexes that are out out of bounds, 
and it won't error. It would just start from the uh, uh, first. When you're doing slicing, when you're doing slicing operators, uh, uh, it does not throw an index error if you reference outside uh, your index. Even with regular, even if you... Oh, is it? Yeah, just try... Uh, uh, actually, try referencing something... Uh, so, five, uh, so maybe uh, 30 and then 50? Uh, try that. I'm pretty sure... It yeah, yeah, so he's right. So, it's okay. So what this does is it goes for oh so it starts counting from hundred but it cannot find an element at hundred then it goes to the oh then it then it goes to a ten and then it finds an element okay okay I, I'm clear finally uh, anybody of you guys still oh so I was the last one congrats <laughs> okay minus two till n uh, so again we know that it uh, uh, so it just uh, this just because there's no negative step so it still goes left to right uh, minus two element is minus so nine nine to ten. Uh, this is len a, the final argument. I guess that should work. Yeah. Okay, this is minus 2, so minus 2 gets evaluated to uh, 9, uh, and then yeah, it just prints from 0 to that. Okay, list slice assignment. Uh, 2, 3 is equal to 0 to 0. So remember that when you slice, it doesn't take into account the second argument, so it doesn't take into account 3. So this essentially means that uh, a, uh, 0, 1, 2, so 3 is the second element, so and then 2 to 3, three it does not include 3 because 3 is the second assignment, so 2, so it, so it replaces this value, or oh, why am I putting a finger there, you cannot see, yeah, it, it puts this to 0, 0, so when you print, you see, instead of 3, you have 0, 0. Okay, now uh, 1, 1, um, it, uh, uh, it, it starts from, uh, so, so here you would think that the start index and the end index is the same, but the rule that I told you was that the end index is not counted. So you should think that nothing happens, but how it treats it as. So uh, let's go to our list. Now this is a uh, 0, 1. This is the first element. Uh, it, it, it takes the first, it tries to take the first element, but the first element is, uh, is greater than or equal to the second argument to the slicing uh, notation. So it actually puts an element here. So you see 8, 9 are inserted before 2. And the list of the list remains the same. Everybody clear on this? Yes, no. My English sucks. Uh, 1, comma minus 1. Uh, here, uh, you start from the, the first element is 0. First element is 8. Minus 1 is 5. So uh, it, uh, it does not include minus 1. So 8 to 4. It puts this as empty. So it becomes 1, comma 5. Okay, okay. Now uh, you can name slices. So uh, mm, this is this is stuff that you can actually use in programs. So uh, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. It slices from minus three to none. Uh, uh, then why do I put a none here? Let me try this. Oh no. Oh, so okay, okay. It, it should still work. So let me just let me do an experiment. Ah, so I don't. Wait, I put a none. Uh, okay, so so it does make a difference. Okay, so so this is just uh, the slice notation. This is just the step, and then uh, a last three uh, minus three to none. So uh, uh, zero one minus one minus two minus three, and then uh, it it takes into account the uh, so it so it doesn't include this and it includes the first three elements if i put if i don't put a none here none minus three none uh, wait why didn't it make a difference none oh okay so so here uh, so so that code was not executed that's why i was wondering so it's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So it prints all elements from 3 to the end of the list. If you remove the none, yeah, so it treats this as the final argument. Uh, minus 3 and then, uh, so you get the first three arguments. Okay? Now uh, this is, uh, so if you want to iterate, many a times I want to have the index of the, uh, many a times when, uh, when I write code, I want to act, so I often do, Instead of doing for i is equal to 0 to len of list, uh, you can actually just do enumerate. 
So what this does is this i is the index value and x is the element. So uh, zero to has so zero at zeroth index we have uh, so our list zeroth index we have hello first index we have world and at the last index we have this. Now uh, if I want to do uh, m uh, uh, so so we so we can do the same thing over dictionaries. Uh, but in dictionaries we can use, I mean, there are other ways to do this as well, but this is the one I use as example. So here it's a key value pair, k is the key, v is the value and you print that out. It does not, Python 3 change a bunch of rules, so in Python 3 you have to, uh, they change it from iter items to items. Uh, I don't want to go into why this is the case, but uh, yeah, uh, because that would take an amount of time. Okay, now zipping. This is another very cool feature of Python. So what zipping does is, uh, okay, you should, so here I print the description of zip. So zip actually takes the, all the tables that are passed to it, and then it takes the zeroth index from each of the table, from each of the list, puts it in a tuple, and then as the second element of the resulting list, it takes the first index of each of the tables or lists passed to it, uh, puts it as a tuple. So zeroth index, one comma a. First index, two, first, first index of b is b, so you have two comma b. Second index of three a is three, uh, uh, of b is c, so you have three comma c. So and, uh, but remember that, uh, um, th that now, uh, so, uh, th uh, so this is actually, what do you call it? Uh, uh, commute, commute, no. Uh, in, in, in mathematical, th in functional programming, there's a word for this when the relation applied to itself comes back to the same thing. Maybe inverse. Yeah, so, okay, this is not exactly inverse, but it's similar. So you see, you get back the two list that you started from. So if you zip this, and uh, you pass this to zip, so again, the same rule of zip. It has three lists as arguments. It takes the zeroth argument from each of the lists, one, two, and three. Uh, uh, so, so it creates a tuple out of the zeroth arguments. Then it creates a tuple out of the first argument. Yeah, uh, you can read the description probably clearer than what I explained. Okay, now, uh, uh, if you so if, if you have uh, more than if the number of arguments in the list is not the same, uh, Python to just ignores it. So you have one comma a, two comma b, three comma c. But notice the four. Uh, it it uh, since it doesn't have a corresponding element for b, it just ignores it. Uh, this is this is useful if you don't want to write code that checks for the number of. If you were to do it, it in an iterative way, you would have to write code that actually checks whether both lists have similar elements or not, and then write logic for that. Uh, so. Okay, now uh, map, uh, uh, map. Uh, okay, so uh, so map just applies the f the function. So so map can take uh, the first argument to map is the expression that you want to apply to the corresponding arguments. Now, if instead of uh, uh, so uh, here uh, we have one iterable items, uh, it applies sqr to all the elements in item. It takes each element in item. Uh, it applies sqr. First, it does sqr one, a square of one is one, so it puts it in a list. Then, f then two square four, three square nine, four square sixteen, and it outputs a list. Now, suppose I had uh, sqr comma items, and this was x, x plus x. Oh, what's wrong with me? Don't answer that. Oh, right, 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 right. Of course. Okay, so so here it has two arguments. It does the same stuff. It uh, it applies as SQR. Since SQR accepts two arguments, that's why you were able to do this. Uh, if we, uh, so, so it takes in each element, so it takes in the first element from, uh, let me make it more clear. Now let me do it uh, six. So is everybody clear on why this works? So if we could increase it to three tables or whatever. Uh, then yeah, let me change it back. Uh, this is because the yeah I, I should have declared a separate list for each cell. But okay. Now uh, this was again interesting. Uh, uh, the API actually allows us to specify none. 
so if so if there is no uh, if there is no uh, function to apply then map actually does nothing it just uh, returns if there's only one argument then then it takes each argument it has nothing to do so it just puts the that argument itself in the list uh, now if you have two then uh, uh, it applies uh, uh, it applies uh, uh, so so first it so according to the nature of map it takes the zeroth argument from both the list one comma a forms a tuple but there's no function to apply it to so 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 it just returns the identity so it applies the identity function the yeah, identity function and then it uh, forms a tuple of one comma a two comma b three comma c now notice that this is exactly the same as map uh, as as zip a comma b so zip a comma b I'm not sure if the implementation is the same or not, but uh, if but we can rigorously prove that the output would be uh, map none map none a comma b is equal to equal to zip a comma b. Uh, this is this is because none is actually treated as an identity function because there's nothing to apply to. Oh, everybody clear on this? Uh, what if um, a and b have different lengths? Then would the map be the same? I yeah, I think it should throw an error. Okay, let's try. Uh, actually, it substitutes for none. Who oh, is it? Right. Ah, yes, he's right. Uh, and then let's see this. Oh, so now it now, now it gets a false because uh, zip actually does not uh, uh, zip uh, zip does not take into account. So zip would have one comma a, two comma b, three comma c, but it would but it would remove d because it doesn't have the same length. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, so so you so according so the way this is a, because of the difference in implementation of how map puts uh, none if it doesn't find corresponding arguments uh, this yeah this is false okay now this is something that I wanted to investigate but I didn't get time so can someone explain to me why this gets evaluated to this no this is a serious question uh, I don't know the answer but this is how it works. Uh, <laughs> we can see your intentions because I can't see your intentions. <laughs> uh, oh, so you can't see the intention? Okay, you can see them. What did you want to do? Huh? Oh, so yeah, I so I was hmm? so I was just searching for applications of zip uh, that uh, the, the, uh, so that can so, so uh, yeah so I just found this interesting example and uh, yeah I, and I found this when he was giving his talk so I didn't have enough time to investigate and I don't understand how this works. Uh, so, so if any of you guys know how this works, please do help us or help me. Uh, if not, yeah, that's pretty much the end of my talk. Uh, any questions? Or do you want to go to the unpacking examples? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless I'm the lecturer and I'm giving points, I don't like to leave as exercise because you guys will never look at it. <laughs> All the love that I spent in preparing this. Okay, so that's then. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any feedback politely? Oh yeah, so I, I do have to advertise this. So I just started this uh, startup and uh, it's in the area of big data and healthcare. And uh, okay, so the backend is not based in Python. I mean, it was earlier based in Python, but I moved to Node.js. Uh, that's for another day. Uh, so earlier I was using Django, but yeah, we are looking for everyone. So <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of people, but we are looking for more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you for coming to the meetup. Sure, can, you just, um, can you open a fax or all the list? Sure. Oh my god, this is so cute. <laughs> Actually that was inten oh that was intentional. Oh come on. Yeah, so if anybody wants to help <coughs> with our website, this this is on GitHub. Uh, there are instructions how to help. Uh, for those of you who are new and if you want to like we have a learning page that's under uh, I didn't know you have all this stuff. Okay, so and uh, so either you're starting from, from scratch, or if you know another language, but you want to quickly ramp up, 
Python, so we put some links for developers. And I would point the, number, the second link for developers that code like a Pythonista. So a lot of, uh, so there are good examples of idiomatic uh, Python that, that, that exist. That, that's, I'm not shutting you down. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> but, uh, uh, well, maybe I should evaluate what the, uh, you know, refer to the previous talk by Martin, he actually said how to evaluate whether your code conforms to PP8 or not. Uh, I should look at my score. But that is not how I act, usually code. That was just for this talk. I'm a good coder. Okay, thanks. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, sorry the meetup started late. Yeah, so we need, we need more speakers. We need uh, also people to come to Python. Yeah, it's, two. Uh, it's June, it's June 17th. It's, uh, it's pretty nice and relaxed conference. We had three nice keynotes this year. Oh yeah, the keynote speakers are awesome. Both the first two are associated with Django and the, the third one, I'm not sure. Oh, she, oh, she maintains Twisted. I don't know what is open hatch. Insomniac software engineer is a job type. What? It's <laughs> official. Where, where, where? Official job. Which one? Which one? Which one? The second Insomniac software engineer. He wants to get paid by the hour. Insomniac. Wow. Hey, who, who wrote the description? Did they send it themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She feels proud about it. Well, she feels proud about it. I mean, I, I assume well, since she sent them the description. <laughs> No, but she doesn't look sleepy from this. <laughs> <laughs> so she just need it. Yeah, but you know, I don't know actually. Ask her. <laughs> yeah. So actually, for for, for for this kind of meetups, we don't need to uh, we don't need to prepare slides or anything, and we also don't need to like again a low blow. I didn't prepare slides. <sighs> then, then that's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Then that's good. Uh, yeah, even if you have like a five to ten minutes. So last last time Martin started something. Uh, yeah. So like a, okay. Tips whatever and modules you have discovered, which is useful, that's good to share. Okay, that's, that's but his tips you should you should use in your code. My tips you should not use in your code. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not all of them. So yeah, we, so it's nice to see gaming people. So we would like to hear. We haven't had a gaming talk in Python in this season yet, so. So that's uh, one thing I realized uh, when everybody introduced themselves. I have no clue about most of the things that people work on. It'd be nice to hear about uh, that. I mean, I, I don't know much about big data or gaming or uh, yeah, the rest of the stuff, uh, research. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it would be good to uh, uh, hear some. Uh, one of the things that happened last meetup was I heard about PyTest and although I've been uh, using Python for a very long time I'd never bothered to check it out and uh, it's after Gabe's talk I realized wow that's pretty cool so you know it's good to uh, uh, learn about something without actively looking out for it uh, so yeah you shouldn't mention research because the research publications are actually not read so I'll be more than happy to bore you with all the <laughs> with the whole paper to show you guys my program, but uh, I don't... Sure, it's the next it minute. It takes a minute and a half, yeah? So yeah. just oh, sure. it. I mean, sure.